Welcome GRD 121 Fall 2020 to our fourth Photopea slash Photoshop exercise or photo editing exercise. This will be cloning bridge so we're going to do a cloning exercise and we're actually kind of moving this up a little bit so we could do some cloning now since we did do some other stuff in our previous exercise with masks and we will do more with masks but right now we're going to focus on cloning because it's a nice skill to work on and a nice skill to have. And what we're going to do first is come to my Warren and look for the assignment cloning bridge. And when you do, you should see two images here. One is an original bridge JPEG. And if you click on that in Chrome, it should open up. And this is what it looks like. And what we're going to do to this image is take away the wires here, take away the wires up here, take away the pole, take away the stop sign, do some editing to the image just to brighten it up a little bit. So we're going to work with this original image and the finished image here's a sample if you click on this now this is a smaller size so it looks a little blurry but we're gonna colorize it and put a vignette on it just like we did with the turkey mask and in addition to that here's all the wires gone here's the stop sign gone here's wires and the pole gone over there so that's all we're gonna do and it takes some time so I'm gonna be doing some things on here and it'll be boring watching me removing wires but I'll try to demonstrate some techniques which will help you with it Cloning takes some time to get used to, and it also takes some time to get better at it, meaning you want to make marks that look very random and don't look like you have repetitive marks and things like that that look like it was cloned. So the whole idea of cloning is make it look like it wasn't cloned. You want to make it look like if you zoomed in, you couldn't even tell that anybody cloned it. So that's what we're going to try to do here. So this is our sample, and this is our original that we're going to work with. I don't need the sample here unless you need to go back and look at it, but I'm going to close this one up. And what I'm going to do is copy this one. So you could download it and then open it, or you could just copy it here. I'm just going to right click on it and say copy image. Now I'm copying it first. Now I'm going to go back to Photopea and we're going to do the same technique, whether you're using Google Drive or you're not using Google Drive, to make the Photoshop file first. So we're going to put this image into a Photoshop file. It's going to be five by seven, so we'll make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go to File, New in Photopea and you can call this PS4 dash and you can just call it bridge. You don't have to put cloning in there, just call it bridge and then dash and then just put your last name first initial. Now we're just going to save it first to your computer and then you're going to upload it either to Google Drive or you're just going to open it again in Photopea. And now I already have this set up here because I was messing around with it earlier but you want to make sure that you change this from pixels to inches so make sure you put it on inches and then make sure it's seven wide and then five. We're going to do seven by five and then make sure in here you put 300 pixels per inch and again, if you put that in, just click in another field, it should take it. You can leave the background white, that doesn't matter right now. So that's all you need to get started, and I'm going to hit Create. And here's our image, and again, we have nothing but a white background. Now, I already copied this. Now, if you didn't copy it yet, you can just right-click and say Copy Image. And you could also do Copy Address, but I'll just do Copy Image. And then you can just do Edit Paste. Command V if you're on Mac, Control V if you're on Windows. And it should paste it as a separate layer. And there it is. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And I think it's pretty much to size. Now, I would recommend scaling it a little bit. So I'm going to go up here on my Move tool. And I'm going to check Transform Controls. If you're not seeing Transform Controls, just check them. So you see the border on here, the handles. So if you want to scale it up a little bit, I'm just going to scale it up a little bit on either side just to make the, the bridge nice and centered so I can just gonna crop it a little bit again every time you scale it in Photopea or Photoshop hit enter and if you don't need these transform controls on because we're not gonna be scaling or moving around you could turn them off and then in here if you're seeing layer one I would double click on it and just call it bridge that way you know it's your bridge you won't be wondering what layer one is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller and then what we'll do first before we worry about cloning it is just do an image adjustment here or a couple image adjustments. I'll zoom in and again just like we did on our second exercise we're just going to look at the shadows first then we're going to look at levels. We're not going to mess with the photo filter or the color cast because it's an outdoor photo and it doesn't have any color cast and we're going to colorize it in the end anyway so that doesn't matter but I am going to go to image adjustments and and I'll go over here to shadows highlights now when it comes up it, this might be in front of your screen but when this comes up it comes up at 50 percent which is too much it's making that a little chalky we want to pull a little detail there but probably somewhere like around 20 might be better maybe even between 15 and 20 somewhere 17 18 19 is probably good 
if you do the before and after you just want to see a little more detail coming in the shadow area you don't want it completely black so just a little bit for a little bit of pop even 15 is probably good you still want contrast you don't want to remove the contrast you just want more detail and I'll hit OK and then I'm also going to check levels and remember, levels is kind of the range of the highlights, the darks, and the midtones. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. Now, when you look at this, sometimes you want to look for kind of flat line areas. Like here, it's missing a bunch of darks. Although you don't want to go and darken the darks, why don't you want to do that? Well, because we just did shadows highlights, which took away some of the darks. So that's because we just lightened some of the shadows. So we lighten them. That's why we have a little gap there. But over here, we have a... Uh, kind of a spike at the end and then we move in there's another spike so there's a couple areas of white and the idea is you don't want to lighten this and bleach out areas to pure white but if there's areas that are white and it doesn't look any different it's not going to matter so I'm going to move this over the highlights over to maybe where that spike is and it looks like it's around 239 now it's very subtle very subtle change but it's it's brightening things just a little bit and that's what I want and that's all I need to do so I'm gonna hit OK now it's very important that you do this now and you don't do it later you can't be making image adjustments after you start cloning because we're gonna clone on a different layer and then if you do that you're gonna have a mismatch between them so make sure you do all this first and we don't have to sharpen anything now we can sharpen things at the end and what I'm gonna do next is before I forget is make a new layer down here and I'm gonna use the new layer icon and I'm just gonna call this cloning because this is where we're gonna do our cloning so we wanna make sure we have this first it's very easy to start cloning and forget to do that so we wanna clone on a different layer not that there's a problem if you don't but it's more forgiving because if you screw something up you could delete it you could get rid of it you're not messing with your original image so we're gonna leave our original image alone also what we're gonna do and actually I guess we could do this first let's first download our file and then we're gonna upload it so since we gave it a name already I'm gonna to go to save as PSD now this is the same whether you're on Google Drive and opening it from Drive or whether you're just gonna do it right off your computer so I'm gonna save as PSD and this will go down into my downloads and remember you don't need to keep it down here because we're not gonna open it from there and then I'm gonna close this because we just saved it so I'm gonna close this and you're gonna either open it from Google Drive or you're just gonna go file open and reopen it so whatever you do I'm gonna use the Google Drive method this time last time I didn't use the Google Drive method but if you were gonna reopen it what you would do is you would go file open and you would look for your downloads and you would open it from there that's the one PS4 bridge that's the one I just made you would open that so if you're not using Google Drive you could do that but I'm gonna use the Google Drive method that means I'm gonna to go to my drive and here it is and I'm just gonna go find the file there it is that's the one I just made so I'm gonna close up some of these windows here and then I'm just gonna drag it into my I already have a GRD 121 that I've been working in I'm just gonna drag it right in there and I'll drag it right on top of there if I can and if not I can move it in there and it's uploading right now alright so it's all finished uploading and let me just check that it's in here and there it is and now I want to open this from Google Drive if I want to keep it saved and I want to maintain a save so that's a good method to do so I'm gonna double click on this now this will open it up in a different tab so I'm gonna go back and close this tab I don't need that open anymore because it's gonna open it here and I may get some kind of message about letting me in and I think I think I'm no no it's okay I thought I might have missed the message sometimes it gives you a message about logging in again but it looks okay and there it is that's the file I have it now open from Google Drive now how do I know if I go file save Google Drive I'll see it there so now I can do incremental saves in Google Drive I don't think it saves it automatically like it does in Google Docs it doesn't auto save but we can save that way one thing I just want to point out first when I start cloning I find this annoying my ruler like because what's gonna happen is when you use your clone brush you're gonna have a hard time finding it sometimes you just will even in Photoshop you will sometimes but even more in Photopea so if you have a hard time seeing it somehow this thing becomes annoying so I'm gonna turn off my ruler I don't need to have my ruler showing right now so that's here it is I'll just uncheck ruler I don't need to see that that's just gonna annoy me so I'm gonna turn that off and again if I go back here I'm gonna look at my sample one more time 
and you can see what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of the wires over here, the stop sign, the wires up here, and there's a pole. And I'll go back here, and this is what we're going to get rid of. These two wires going across, there's wires over here and a pole. There's a pole here, and there's a stop sign. Now some of this will be easy to get rid of, like stuff in the sky sometimes. Sometimes skies are easy, sometimes they're not, because there's very subtle differences, and it's very hard to hide sometimes. But this is a nice even blue sky, so that should be easy to work with. So we'll get started in here. And again, I'll move this over just a little bit and make sure you're on your cloning layer. Make sure you're on this. Don't be on this layer. Be on your cloning layer. And another thing we're going to do, we're going to go to your clone stamp tool. And if you go down here, I don't know if you have it in two columns or not, but it's the one that looks like a rubber stamp and it's under the paintbrush. So I'm going to click on that. And one of the things I'm going to do first, well, two things I'm going to do. One is check aligned because that will keep your sample point, where you sample from, will stay with your brush no matter where you go, because otherwise it'll restart again. So we're going to keep it with your brush. And there may be times you need to uncheck that, but for now we'll keep it aligned. And then also, we don't want our source to be current layer, because guess what's on our current layer? This is our current layer. There's nothing on it. It's like a piece of transparent film. There's nothing on it. So we want to make sure that we're not sampling from a layer with nothing on it. So we want to sample from layers below. Now it doesn't matter if we do all layers or just the one below. It says current and below. You could just do all layers. It will be fine. But make sure you're on this. Make sure you have all layers selected. And make sure you have a line check to get started. Now also one thing, and I hadn't even noticed this before, but whether you use Mac or Windows, you're going to use Alt, and this is to select source. And I don't even remember if they had this button before. Because typically you hit your, your Alt key or your Option key to start a sample point and kind of paint from. And again, what you're going to do is you're going to paint over stuff with neighboring pixels, meaning stuff right by it. So what you're going to do here is when you paint over wires, you're going to get right next to them because you're going to want to paint the same sky that's right next to it. And when you paint over wires here, you want to paint the trees that are right next to it. And you want to make sure that the trees look natural, that you don't have a lot of repeated things because in nature, you're not going to see a bunch of branches that look exactly alike. So I'm going to go back to my clone stamp tool and I'll start with something simple. I'll start up here with the wires and I'm going to zoom in with my command plus and again when you need to pan around or kind of scroll around just use your spacebar hold your spacebar you'll get that hand and I want to just kind of get this in my view here so I can do this and maybe even just zoom in a little bit more I think you could zoom in increments by holding your alt key I'll try that now when you use your clone tool it's gonna to be a brush and I don't know if you can see my brush right now it's kind of small so I'll make it a little bit bigger now how big to make it I'm gonna make it I guess like that I don't want it too small because I don't want to see a line or anything and I don't want it gigantic because you know it's not a really big line now it's about 60 pixels so I'm gonna go here and I can see it's around 60 pixels and the hardness is at 100 percent now if I'm doing sky I don't want it real hard I don't know if there's anything where I want it super hard except maybe when I'm doing like the edge and trying to get rid of the stop sign over there but I'm gonna take it down to maybe 70 percent maybe even less maybe even like 60 so I'll go 60 and 60 to start now if you need to make this go away just click up here what you're gonna do with the clone stamp on aligned source on all layers and if you ever lose it, I'm going to mention this right now, if you lose your brush, because once you start doing this, you may not know where your brush is, because it'll actually sample the color of the sky of where you click, and then you may not see it. Um, if you use your brackets to make it larger, the right bracket to make it larger, or your left bracket to make it smaller, that'll show that outline. So you can see my outline here, and I'm going to zoom in even more and use my space bar and just just to kind of work on that area and you could work use your spacebar as you're working that's probably a good zoom level here and that's probably good to start and I'm gonna alt click or what's nice is you could use this button click here and it says select source so you're gonna select source now I'm gonna select a source there's that crosshair it's gonna be right near where I want to paint over but be careful because I have a bigger brush I don't want to be right on it because it'll be right on top of me so I'm gonna go like around here and I'm gonna click this is what I was saying when you first do that you lose your brush you can't see it but it's there see if I move over here I can see it but if I move there it's really hard to see and if you use your brackets to kind of make it bigger smaller you kind of see where it is so I'm even gonna make it a little bit smaller and maybe even a little bit smaller so I'll put it down to 60 again I think it got bigger so what it does is it samples what you just alt clicked on so when you clicked on this I'll even do it again I'll click on it let me click again and reset my source. So I'll set my source right here. 
that means I'm going to paint from that. So I'll click on that. And again, there's my brush, here's my brush, and I'm going to go in here and just kind of go up, down with my brush just so I could see it. And uh, since it's a soft brush, I could probably take away that little bit by the leaf. And you could paint, you could see there's a little crosshair as I'm painting that's showing up. See, it's kind of following. It's kind of like a, I don't know if you ever saw like a, like a tractor that's kind of picking up grass and throwing it into the, like a collection thing next to it. It's kind of going next to it. And that's what you want to do. So you're painting and it's sampling from that little crosshair. Now, as you get near the edge, you're going to get messed up. So you have to stop. You don't have to. And then you want to reset it. Now, if you move around, you're like, wait a minute, where'd my cursor go? Just hit all again. And, and I'm just going to reset back here. And because it's all the same. Now, it's, that'll be more challenging when we get to other areas. But I'm just going to reset it here. So it's kind of more horizontal with it. And then I'm going to start painting. And you can see now I could go up and it's not going to hit the top. So I just got rid of that. And it actually looks pretty good. So before I do anything else, I might save. <laughs> I might do that if I'm working from Google Drive. Now, what I did, if I turn off my, there it is. There's the, see, I have all my cloning stuff here. That's what I just did. I just painted that. So that's what I just did. So I'm going to put everything back again. And I'm going to start on this wire. Now, there's a little wire going in the tree there. So that means you would clone maybe tree over it. Now. I'm not sure where I'd clone, but you can use this alt thing again and maybe target there. And then you could just lay this over top. Now, does that look natural? Uh, doesn't look too bad. You kind of, and you don't have to paint. You can just click. So I could just click here and just put that on there. And I think it looks pretty good. And then I'm going to alt click again because I need to reset my target again because now I'm doing the sky part again. So I'm going to click up here and just kind of go against the leaves a little bit. Now you can click or you can try and paint, whatever you want to do. And you know, if you want to take all day, you can click, you could try to go faster here. And that's a good size brush that I'm working in. And then you could hold your space bar and move it. So if you're running out of room here, you could keep going and I'll keep going. And you can see the little target is ahead of it a little bit. And when it runs up into the top of the canvas there, it's going to go off and I'm not going to be able to do anymore. That's why I have to reset it again. So you can go back to your alt and kind of reset more at an even level. So I'll click over there and start painting. And again, if you can't find your brush, if you get lost, just go up down with your left and right bracket. And now I'll start painting again. And now I see my target behind me and I should be able to finish this off I think, and if not, then just hit your Alt key. If you're, if you're tired of going up here and doing this, you don't have to keep doing it. You could hit your Alt key. That's just to help you instead of having to use your Alt key. So I'll click down here and paint this here. Now you just got to watch because sometimes skies can have very subtle changes of dark and light that you might look like it's all one color of blue, but it's really not. And then I'm going to hold my space bar and move down and then I'll just do this one. So this should be easy. Again, I'm, now I'm just going to alt click. Instead of using this thing, I'm just going to alt click down here. Hold alt and just go through. Now you want to be careful that your crosshair isn't too close to your brush or ahead of it. You know, it's kind of like somebody who was walking behind you and they're like stepping on your feet almost. You need a little personal space here, a little social distance between the crosshair and the brush. So we're going to Alt click a little bit further away from it and then I'll go and start again. Now because it's a smaller wire I could probably make my brush a little bit smaller and again I'm using a soft brush because I'm using sky and there's trees and stuff things that don't have really rough edges and I'll just click in between here and I'll just keep painting and I'll hit my space bar to give myself some room and work on this and again if you lose yourself just use your brackets to make them bigger or smaller and then I'll go down here. Now, again, almost keep your hand over the Alt key because you could do the Alt key again and click. So you're holding Alt and clicking. That's why up here you click Alt and then you click. So it's the same kind of thing. You set your point. Now I'm painting with that target point and it's moving with me because I have a line set. Now, if it gets ahead of me, I won't be able to finish this up, which it did. So I have to just reset my point so it's behind me a little and I could finish that up. And then I'll use my space bar to kind of drag and I'll, I'll do some of this over here and I'll go in the opposite direction. 
and I'll kind of move into here. Now, here's where I got to be careful because now I have tree kind of stuff. Now, that's where I can go over here and hold click and just borrow some tree stuff and put it over top. And look for areas. Now, in here, I'll even zoom into this a little more. You see how there's a little gap in there. Now, I don't want to use something that's exactly the same, but I can go here, hold my Alt key, and click here. That has a little gap, and I could throw the same little gap in here a little bit. And then I'll have to look for ways to kind of cover up this stuff, you know, make sure it looks real. That looks okay. And now what you're doing is you're covering up wires with trees instead of sky. And you have to look for things that are kind of similar around it. And sometimes you can get lucky and do stuff. Sometimes you got to look around a little. I'll throw that in there. There's Because you see there's dark areas in here. So instead of looking for dark areas right next to it, look for a dark area down here and try to throw that in. And you can see here where there's kind of a green edge going over that. Look for another area where there's a green edge, like right above it. So Alt-click there, and I'll try to throw that in. Now, here I'm seeing the same exact angle, so I may want to look for something else if I can. Now, sometimes that's why you can kind of lay it on top a little bit and see what it looks like. And that looks okay. And however you want to do this, if you want to keep doing this side of it, or if you want to keep moving to the left, you know, you could keep working in this area here because you're getting familiar with the tree. So you could kind of work work around a little bit. I'm going to do this part and lay that in there and then maybe go up. The idea is kind of go, like go above it, go below it, go different places. Don't stay right next to it. I'm going to Alt-click up here and throw that down there. you got to be careful because there's that same kind of shape right there. So whenever you see that stuff, that, that kind of looks fake. So you want to find things that look a little different. And here I'll throw that in there a little that looks okay there's a little sky area in there now I could go down below and try to just throw some more sky area in there that looks okay here's some dark area I'll just that's too big now you could make your brush smaller and then that way you could put a smaller dark area in there when you go over that now that looks kinda of not right but I'll borrow that maybe I'll throw that over there then I'll go throw some dark area and just kinda of work around it a little bit you become somewhat of a master of cloning a little bit when you start working on this stuff. It's, it takes time to get good at it. I mean, you know, I'm not perfect at a learning process every time. There's no one way to do it. You just, you just try to make it look as natural as possible. And sometimes you have to zoom back a little too. Sometimes if you're too close, you might think it looks great. And then you go back and it looks fake. And something looks fake about it. So, and there's a wire showing there, so I might want to get rid of that. So and you got to be careful sometimes you do quick things and then it goes over that so you can see this isn't something that that happens really quick I mean it took me took me a while and I got the wires out now I'm working on this stuff so there's a lot of work to do here and I think I'll try to do some of this without recording it and then get back and do some of the areas that are a little more challenging because you can kind of get the idea of what's happening here so I think what I'll do is I'll take a break I'll work on it a little bit and then I'll come back and get to some of the more of the challenging areas now if you're working in Google Drive just do a save Google Drive of where you're at. And if you're not working on Google Drive, after you do some work, this would be a good time to do a save as PSD. Maybe throw away the one that's in your downloads already so that it doesn't put a one after the name. And then just close it or just keep it there and do your file save and keep working. So I'm going to take a break here on part one and then I'll come back and just keep cloning. I mean, that's all we're doing. So this is more of an exercise where we're really practicing our cloning. So I'll, I'll do some more on my own without you watching or without recording it. And then I'll come back and I'll do some live and see how that works. And that's good because then if I screw things up, you'll see what I do when I screw things up. So we'll come back with part two of our PS4 bridge clone.